Uh, good evening, everyone. Welcome to the first um, meeting of city of uh, meeting of the whole for the first year, uh, first meeting of the year. Uh, first of all, I'd like to um, hope everybody had a nice Christmas, and I want to wish everybody a happy New Year, a healthy and prosperous one. Also, before I start the meeting, because we forgot to uh, end the year on a high note, so I thought I'd. I'd uh, start the new year on a high note. Um, my name is Dorothy Flanagan. I'm the fourth ward alderman together with uh, Alderman Ron Singer. And um, let the record show that uh, everyone is present except for Alderman Kilberg. First item on the agenda is to approve the minutes for December 8th, 2014. Do I hear a motion? So moved. Second. Second. Uh, motion by Alderman Brown, second by Alderman Bruno. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. I'm sure no one's opposed, so I will continue on. Um, items of business, uh, introduction, were uh, Economic Development Director Kathleen Chomazinsko. Hi. <laughs> She's been with us for a while already, but come to the podium if you. And the correct pronunciation of your last name Tomasinko, is? Tomashenko, right? Tomashenko. Oh, Tomashenko. Okay. Um, you wanna... That was wonderful. Okay. <laughs> oh, welcome. Yeah, can you, how long have you been here, first of all, with the city? I, sure. Uh, you um, started... I, before Christmas, I know that. Right, I, I started right before Christmas on December 15th. Um, I'm very honored and um, excited to be working here. Um, I'm already um, very interested in all of the projects that um, I've been um, engaged in, and I'm looking forward to uh, working to further the council's goals and to assist the business community with their goals and just to help the city with economic development efforts and. Um, growth in the future. I noticed that you had some new uh, new way of, of presenting meetings minutes, or are you going to consolidate some items, or? Oh, with, um, the, with business, the business community, yeah. Um, one of the things that we had talked about right off the bat was um, looking at trying to uh, make less meetings for some of the business groups for the merchants, um, to have quarterly meetings, which are a little richer in content. Um, instead of having numerous meetings because some of the attendance has been um, not what we hoped it would be. So we had the first uh, business improvement retention committee meeting last week and we introduced that concept and it was pretty well received. So we're gonna look to do that um, on a quarterly basis now going forward um, in the new year. So it's a, a new year and trying to look at a new approach. And I think you've met just about everybody on the city council uh, at this point, but uh, does anybody have any questions? Yes, Alderman Singer. Yes, thank you. Um, Kathleen, what was it that inspired you to become part of our staff here in Geneva? Um, what was well, your motivating factor? <laughs> I've always really liked Geneva. I've admired Geneva for many, many years. I, I used to uh, come and visit, and I used to think it'd be pretty cool to work here. I like the, the city. Um, it's my profession. It's what I've been doing my whole career. And um, I have um, you know, been working um, toward bettering myself and improving myself. And I saw the um, opportunity in Geneva, and I thought it looked very interesting. And, like something I'd, I'd like to uh, work on, and so I applied, and I was hired. <laughs> well, that was a very nice reply. Thank you. So, uh, yes, Alderman uh, Maladra. So you've been here how long? I've, I've been here not a month yet, but December 15th was my first day. Okay, so from your perspective, what would you say are top three strengths and weaknesses are? <laughs> 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 Just in your um, three-week one, one really large strength I see is that there's a lot of support and everybody seems to be pulling together toward the betterment of the city. Um, I think that's a huge strength. Um, somebody said to me at my first, my welcome ceremony, they said, 
I know you'll succeed because everybody wants you to succeed and, and that I felt really happy about that because it, it does seem like there's a lot of camaraderie and everybody really looking to work to better the community and there may be differing opinions and obviously that's going to happen but um, it just seems like everybody has that big picture. Um, another big strength um, I see is the amount of planning and strategic planning and goals that are set. That's very refreshing and exciting to see. You kind of have it written there. You know exactly what people are looking for you to achieve and what they want you to work toward. So I see that as a, as a big um, strength. And the other strength I see is just the diversification of the tax base, you know, you've got a little bit of everything. You've got um, the fantastic historic downtown. You've got the opportunities um, in the commercial corridor on Randall, the industrial base that's, that's there and looking to grow. So I think that's a, a very big strength, the diversity of the economy so far and looking to help to improve that as we move forward. Cool. So you're not going to touch the weaknesses part. Weaknesses. That's all right. You don't have to. I don't. You don't have to. <laughs> she hasn't noticed any yet. Yeah. yeah. There you go. <laughs> there you go. How many years have you worked with municipalities? Um, I think it's it's 26 years exactly, um, according to uh, the edition that I've done. Um, I started out um, in 1988, um, right when I graduated college, started working in municipal government, um, so I've, I've been um, in the municipal field my whole career. Anybody else have any comments or questions? Thank you very much and welcome again. Welcome. Thank you very much Thanks. and I look forward to uh, the future here. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Okay, item B is to recognize Community Development Director Dick Unch on his retirement. So that's the flip side of Kathleen. <laughs> yes, please. Um, I don't know who is to recognize you other than ourselves, and thank you very much for all the service that you've given us over the years. How many years has it been? I'm into my 17th year. Cool. Um, yes. Yeah. Congratulations, Dick, and thank you very much. Yes. I have learned well, a lot you. from you. I'm sure everyone else has. Yeah. Thank you. I, I appreciate those words. Uh, Do you have any uh, any uh, items that you would want to share with us? Uh, strengths and. Uh, <laughs> 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 sure. I don't think she thinks I need some <laughs> boning up. <after. coughs> well, I, you know, I, I wasn't sure what this would be tonight, but I, I did. Uh, I, I had some thoughts. Uh, uh, just first, um, I have to thank you all. Uh, from the bottom of my heart uh, for the opportunity to work in this community for 17 years. Um, you know, I can't believe 17 years have passed. Um, and um, I, I probably knew, um, I probably knew very little about Geneva when I first came here and c certainly learned a lot over the course of my time here and grew to really appreciate um, the people here, the leadership, uh, the staff, uh, it's, uh, it has been an honor and a privilege and, and certainly a highlight of my professional career in this field. I've been on the public sector side of city and community planning for 43 years and, and this has been a great uh, experience. Um, I started j jotting down some qualities that I saw as I uh, maneuvered my way through with the various um, plans and zoning ordinance amendments and planned unit developments and subdivisions and rezonings and all the various development matters that I've had contact with while working uh, for the city. And uh, with this council, I've, I've appreciated your open-mindedness, your courage in facing some very difficult planning and development decisions, your sense of equity and fair play in dealing with uh, the various controversial issues that come up uh, in, in the process of not only planning for development and for preservation of, of uh, historic qualities of our community, but also um, uh, looking at the very specific regulations that you have to put in place 
to make things happen, to make positive change. And that's always a messy process. But a messy process tends to be a good process because it usually produces good results. You know, uh, the messiness meaning um, more bottom up than top down governance, uh, where everyone participates in, and has an opportunity to engage in decision making. You've been forward thinking. Uh, you've expected a high level of responsiveness of me and my staff, and uh, and and and. I, hopefully, we've measured up to that in terms of a responsiveness to the community. Uh, this is a respectful environment uh, to work in, uh, and that respect carries over into the public meetings that are held. Uh, certainly, uh, certainly, uh, honesty and integrity are, in, are watchwords uh, within this organization, and being considerate towards others and treating people like you would want to be treated uh, is a watchword in the organization. This is a, a population and a community that is passionate about, about what they have, about, about the very nature of this special community. Organizational excellence is expected by this council, and, and it's, it's great to see. We have open government here, open decision making, uh, a citizenry that's well engaged, and the council is engaged as well. I believe you're opportunistic and look to make the best out of every situation that comes along that requires action by you. You're hardworking. You're willing to listen sometime to some very long staff memos that I've presented to you. Uh, and you've been encouraging and patient uh, through some uh, both challenging and, and, and yet very successful times. So I, I just thank you. Uh, for this experience because it's been very special and I'll, I'll not forget it. Special thanks to the department heads and our, our senior staff, Stephanie Dawkins, Steve Olson, and Steve Mexon, Kathleen Tomasenko, Rich Babica, and Mary McKittrick. Uh, we have a great team here, and I say we, even though I'm gonna be gone in a couple of days here, but uh, the team, the management team is a very special, very talented and professional group. And finally, our, our staff in the Community Development Department, David, Paul, Mike, Michael, Laura, Lori, Jim, Eric, and Dustin. Uh, again, they've been, uh, been great people to work with. Uh, I hired most of them, and I'm, I'm proud to say I'm very pleased with their performance and the work that they do. So with that, uh, I bid you farewell and thank you for everything. I, I, I know that your last day is January 16th, so uh, you're going to only be here with us a short time. But uh, again, thank you very much. On my behalf, um, you've done, I thought, an excellent job in, in uh, trying to uh, kind of I mean, help us to realize certain things and also to uh, help us uh, develop Geneva the way we had hoped it would be so um, questions from uh, Alderman Bruner I'll take uh, thank you madam chair um, uh, more than any other staff person I've worked with Dick longer because of my tenure on historic preservation and uh, um, uh, my, my last opportunity to uh, to the to the dig on the, on the uh, on how verbose Dick can be. <laughs> uh, we're, we were lucky though, there are many people that can talk a lot, um, but few that can talk a lot and actually be worth listening to. Uh, Dick is uh, probably uh, instrumental for better or worse uh, of, of me even being on this council here uh, because I saw someone um, uh, he, he seemed the best of public service, uh, thoughtful, deliberative, uh, fair. Uh, you know, having gone through any number of projects with uh, with Dick, and whether it's historic or strategic planning, what have you, I know the city is uh, immeasurably better for your participation. So, uh, thank you very much, Dick. Thank you for that.
All I can say is thank you. You've taught me a lot with my short time on the council, and I know we've, you've had to sit down and explain things to me from the, from the very beginning, but I appreciate it. But I think most of the people on the council would agree Geneva is a better place because of the work you've done. I really, truly believe that, Dick, and thank you for all your service. Thank you so much. Alderman Maladra. So I feel like we got started kind of at the same time. I, I didn't realize it was 17 years ago, but I remember when you got hired. I wasn't on the city council. I was on SPAC. See, you've been stuck with me for a long time. Mm. Sorry, sorry about that. <laughs> um, you know, Dodson Place, uh, comprehensive plans, bike ped plan, strategic plan, downtown master plan, 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 planned unit developments that can just go on and on. But I think that uh, that you've, your impact and your mark on Geneva is there. And in, in a lot of ways, it's there in places and mechanisms that wouldn't have been possible without your approach and your imagination. Um, I've, I've learned, you know, most of the things you said about this council, I think, apply to you. You're, you're open-minded, <laughs> no matter how kooky my ideas are. Uh, you listen, and every controversial issue you and I walked into, you never thought any one stakeholder was any more or less important than any other stakeholder. You listened to everybody. You helped guide us away from the extremes of emotion towards some amount of rationality. Um, and I think all of that, not just the, the physical result of what we've done, but the approach and the temper and the demeanor and the style with which we did all of that, we owe an awful lot of that to you, and we're going to miss it. Pity the poor fool who's got to follow you. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh. Uh, we won't lead in with that one yet. Thank you. Yeah. Um, Mr. Thanks, Mayor, Dick. Oh, <laughs> Thank you. I just wanted to publicly um, Thank Dick. I, I started here three months after, after Dick did, and um, have worked closely with him uh, side by side, on a daily basis. Um, and so I feel like, um, besides the the best management team that I've ever worked with, um, I feel like we're family. So I wanted you to know publicly how much I appreciate you. Um, you've made my job so much easier, and. Um, I'm going to miss you. So thank you very much. Thank you. I'm going to miss you too. Alderman Simonian. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Thank you. Um, I joined the city about this, uh, as a resident about the same time you joined as a uh, director, I guess. Um, fortunately, I didn't have the luxury for many years to know you or work with you. In the last year and a half since I've been appointed, I've been a we have worked on quite a few things in a short period of time. And I can say in that short period of time, two things, three things. One is um, the city is definitely better off. Uh, the past and I believe the future, um, especially because your legacy, I think is gonna do a great job. Um, and two is I wish you the best of luck, and three is your class act, and it was a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you very thank much. You. Oh, thank you, Madam Chairman. Um, Dick, we've uh, we had somewhat of a private conversation regarding your leaving the city, and I expressed how much we I appreciated your talents and. Uh, Privately, of course, a lot of things were said in, in that regard, and and I also want to express to you in a public fashion, one of the things I'm going to miss is your friendship. And that was something I really appreciated. The many conversations we had about your family and my family, and we sort of had some kind of a bond there for all the years that you've been with the city, and it was really greatly appreciated. So I wish you well and enjoy your family and enjoy your retirement. Thank you very much. Thank you, Madam Chairman. You're welcome. 
Well, I, don't, I, I really don't have anything else to add. Dick and I had a great party last week. Um, other than we need to, of course, recognize your lovely wife, Barbara, your son, Brian, your daughter, Julie, their respective spouses, Amy and Kevin, and of course your, what do you have, five is it now, grandchildren? We have five grandchildren. Five grandkids. Yeah. Unbelievable. So now they deserve, and obviously we'll enjoy more time with you, and rightfully so. Absolutely. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any plans for you, what you're going to do during your retirement? Uh, I have some plans, but they are uh, they're fairly loose at this point. Okay. Um, loose plans. I, I'm yeah, not Dick Unch and loose plans. It's kind of a misnomer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm retiring. So that's part of the whole thing. planning energy. Who ever heard of planning? Uh, I, I, the, the focus will be on. Um, I, I'm exploring some some volunteer opportunities that um, are certainly out there. Um, we live in Naperville now. We used to live in Geneva, but now we're in Naperville, and and uh, I I just can't you know take up space. So uh, I'll be I'll be engaged in the community in some way moving forward. Uh, just time with the grandkids, travel, uh, and uh, well, we know, wish just you approach the best. it one day at a time. Thank you very much. God, I hope Melodic. not. I hope it's not uh, what Mal Alderman Meladra said. <laughs> um, we'd like to introduce the, uh, the incoming Community Development Director, David DeGroot. Prove him wrong. Full step forward. <laughs> I'm expecting the same ovation. <laughs> In 17 yeah, years, man. Wait a minute, it just started. We'll, we'll have to wait a couple of years. No, I've... Uh, I've really enjoyed working with Dick too for the last six years and obviously very big shoes to fill. Um, but I'm really excited to have the opportunity and really grateful to have that opportunity here in Geneva to continue my career. I look forward to working with the management team and all of you a little more closely. It's a great place to be. And this is a move up from your current, uh, from your position from before you were the planner. Yes. So now you're going to fill Dick's shoes, as you said. So I'll we wish you the best. And my best. <laughs> anybody have any other questions or comments? No, well, wish uh, you the best. So when we thought Dick was skating for the last several months, he was really just making sure you could stand on your own. <laughs> he's, he's, you know, I've learned a lot from him. He's, he's really prepped me for, for this challenge. I'm excited for it. With that, good luck. Thank good you luck. very much. Yes. yes. Good luck. And we'll be seeing a lot of you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, moving on to item D of the agenda is the Historic Preservation Ordinance Update Status Report. And Mr. Unch is going to be here one more time, right? Yes. We get an uh, ovation after this, too. <laughs> uh, no, no, no more. No more. Sorry. We've been working on uh, the Historic Preservation Ordinance. Uh, review and update and uh, uh, work has progressed on this on this uh, aspect of our work program uh, to the point where we can uh, outline a schedule for the upcoming review of uh, the draft ordinance by our Historic Preservation Commission. They are essentially going to be serving in a mode uh, where they will be the review body that will be uh, taking public comment, uh, reviewing the various aspects of the, uh, the draft that's um, uh, nearing finalization and um, uh, from a staff perspective. And uh, we'll be modifying, adjusting, amending. You know, it's a very malleable document in its current form. Um, and so the schedule that we've, we have outlined is as follows. On Tuesday, January 20th, uh, the rescheduled City Council meeting uh, will be held here in the City Council Chambers. At that point, staff will provide uh, an update on uh, various aspects of the Preservation Ordinance and, and the review that's, that's now underway. Um, on, um, 
on Tuesday, February 17th, the HPC, the regular meeting of the, of, of the uh, Historic Preservation Commission is canceled. On Tuesday, February 24th, the rescheduled regular uh, February 17th meeting of, this, of the uh, HPC uh, will be held and uh, the preservation ordinance will be on that agenda for review and discussion. On Tuesday, March 10th, a special Historic Preservation Commission meeting will be held in the council chambers. And all of these are 7 p.m. starts, by the way. Uh, and the preservation ordinance will be the only topic on the uh, commission's agenda that evening for uh, review and discussion. Uh, we anticipate, uh, and I'll just mention briefly, that um, uh, you know, our preservation planner is part-time. He's been working on this project uh, diligently while managing the flow of, of permit caseload that's before the, the Preservation Commission uh, in terms of his day-to-day -day work. Um, we anticipate that there probably will be additional meetings called after the March 10th meeting. Uh, because based on the, the, uh, the work that's been done, and we, we had an initial staff review on Friday afternoon, and, and based on what we see, there probably will be a need for further meetings after March 10th, and those will be scheduled uh, when and if they're needed. Uh, so that's, uh, that's my report for you this evening, and uh, open to questions. Will these dates be posted on the... Uh Web. Yeah, well, well, I certainly have this all posted on and outlined for everyone. And of course, the agendas will be all on the agenda center, and the, the background materials for each of those meetings and will be on is, the agenda center. Is there any way that uh, uh, people who have responded to uh, wanting to know about this agenda, is there some vehicle that we have on the website that we could notify these people that this is going to be on our agendas, or should they just look for? our website and pay attention. To well, they can certainly, you know, follow uh, the meeting schedule that's online on the agenda. If there are folks that have an interest in, in directly communicating with us and, and, and us responding back to them on, on meeting dates and times, we're more than happy to communicate that out. Okay, thank you. Yes. Um, also, people can sign up for alerts so yeah, that when the agendas get find. posted, they should get an email or a text, depending on how they sign up, uh, to be notified of that. So that would be a good way, um, so that they don't have to make the effort. The, that's the, the what I was trying to come to them. Good, because that's what I was trying to mm -hmm. sure. make sure that those alerts were some way uh, communicated. <laughs> so, and if anyone has any problems, you know, let us know. Let me know, and we'll, you know, have staff take care. You know, try to help with that. But uh, I. Actually, I just got one uh, about the Zoning Board of Appeals. So I sign up for them myself. So I get the email alerts whenever there's uh, any kind of agenda posted. So if anyone has any uh, problems doing that, let us know, and we'll, we'll help get you set up for that. Yes, Alderman Brown. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Given uh, straightforward comments and suggestions for changes at either the January or the March meeting, do you see the HBC taking a vote at that point and it coming to the council before, say, June? Well, I, I will, certainly we're, we're working on a, on a schedule to have this entirely completed by the end of the fiscal year. But, uh, by the end of but, but by it, May. But, it, mm -hmm. but, but, but there's, there's still, I don't believe this is a process that should be rushed in any way, shape, or form. So we want to take this, uh, this whole review process, walk through um, all the various uh, uh, topical subject matter of the, of the ordinance um, deliberately and, and with, uh, with eyes wide open. And if it, takes, if it takes a little bit longer than the, the end of the fiscal year, I think we ought to use that time. Um, but you're hoping, given the way you've laid it out at the moment, that it could be taken care of by this council? Yes, yes. Any other questions? Is there any other questions from the audience? Yes. Would you state your name and address, please? I'm Marty Smersage, and I live at 909 South Batavia Avenue. Uh, 
the history of the historic review goes back, uh, way back, and the mayor reminded us at the last meeting in this chamber how far back it goes and how much due diligence went into establishing the historic commission and all the codes associated. Uh, I think we're fortunate that we now have Mr. Lambert on board with uh, the background and the knowledge to truly handle this sensitive subject in a profi uh, professional manner. Uh, as far as history goes, I came into the history of this issue, if you will, of historic preservation in 2011. And I remember very clearly standing before this committee, and I can practically quote every word that was said. Uh, and I left that meeting uh, very encouraged because the, uh, we ended up seeing a process work, and it worked effectively. You remember there was, as I see the history, there was a strong, strong effort to establish a new historic district. Others would say, no, it was a study area. Well, there was a lot of pressure to, to establish that district. But the process worked, and it came to this committee, and I remember some very key words. If you don't want it, we don't want it. And that seemed to be uh, the fact that carried the decision of this committee to reject establishing a new historic district because the residents of that district did not want it. Sounds pretty simple and straightforward. At that time, we were circulating, I was circulating a petition asking for signatures for those that uh, wanted to see um, the historic uh, code change to include owner consent. Uh, that's a very strong concept to wrap your brain around, owner consent. And I had no idea of the opposition that we would run into. And there was plenty of it. I advised the mayor I was circulating the petition. And he, he said on the phone to me, we're going to review that. And I said, thank you. And I s then stopped the petition. I said, hey, we have the commitment of the city of Geneva to review his, uh, owner consent for historic preservation in 2011. Stop the petition. We don't need it. Well, I think I was wrong to stop the petition at that time because everything stopped. Now, a few days later in uh, 2011, the mayor again volunteered that same committing or, uh, commitment at the end of a city council meeting. Again, I left encouraged. My God, we're going to review it. Now, jump ahead with me, if you will, to 2014. Suddenly, three years have passed and no action taken. And at that meeting in 2014 in June, the, this committee made a very clear consensus that they wanted to see some action taken. And it was passed to the staff that we wanted action taken. That was in June. In July, I'm sorry, that was in July when the consensus of this meeting uh, was the direct city staff to examine the subjects uh, that came to the forefront with the debacle of the sunset uh, uh, situation. Now here we are in 2012 and we hear there's a new uh, number of uh, deadlines or uh, timelines that we're facing. I call on my past experience and my expectations and when I walked in here I thought well I'm not going to hear, as I did last year, that we'd have it in October or that we'd have it in January, or, or excuse me, we'd have it in December, we'd have it in Jan January, then we'd have it in April. I now hear we're going to have it, have it, have it. Um, and I have to say, uh, Dick, I will ask you to uh, send me that outline of the dates that you mentioned. I'm sorry I was sitting back here and couldn't hear everything that was said and couldn't take it down fast enough. But I'm, I'm very interested in those, those deadlines. Uh, but I'm concerned. My Mr. past Smirchik, experience. Mr. Smirchik, you do have the, uh, you do, are you on the alert? 
I'm on the alert. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you, you, I'm sure that you'll you'll be given that information uh, via email when the meetings are also in addition. Yeah. To the the alert will tell us that there is a meeting at such and such uh, right and commission and the subject will be and, brought up. And, and yeah, and, and, and at that time you you'll you'll be I'm sure have a, uh, an opportunity to once again uh, express your concerns and. I'm very much looking forward to it. My concern is that this will be continuing on and on and on, that we'll get caught. And I would urge that this council and the staff consider something that we strongly suggested late last year. Many of you will recognize this document. And this document separates the issues. It takes what we called omissions and errors and we put them in a section and we say these are the things that can be fixed through a process and much like the process Dick talks about these are the things that most people will agree with these are the things that will not burn the place down when they're brought up separate those set them aside and face the elephants in the room there are two elephants and one elephants well no <laughs> not you all have been Maladra. One elephant says, hey, we want 51% uh, percent, uh, uh, commitment from the, or approval from the residents of a new district. That's a big elephant, and there's a lot of people that disagree with that. Take that elephant and stick it over here, but stick it next to that huge one that says we want owner consent for a new landmark. Now, that's the core issue. That's the thing that staff should be looking at. That's the thing that should be reported back here sooner than later. That, those are the two issues that should be solved. When those issues are solved on a timely basis, then the collateral issues will flow. And it may take until May or June or July or August to get all those little things changed, to get the wording in the... Uh, and the ordinance absolutely correct. That's great. But why in the world would we let the resentment fester for not looking at the two main issues? From 2011 until 2015, we're waiting for those issues to be addressed? Uh, that's not good. Well, it's not good policy. And it underlines or undermines the credibility of the whole process. Well, you do realize that once eight, um, the uh, HPC has the document, we will, in turn, it will come back to us, so we will be able to review it in more Absolutely. extensive. Absolutely. So uh, some of your comments will be certainly taken tonight, and we really, yeah. truly appreciate your... that's not my concern. Your... I mean, that's not my worry, or that's not what I'm trying to express. I think that's a good process, and I applaud the process. It will work. That process will work. Right. But it will be undermined by those two elephants if you don't address those first. Well, we thank you for pointing those two elephants out for us. Yes, I, I thank you for taking the time to listen. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any questions from the council? Uh, I was just going to ask that. Is there <laughs> any questions? I guess not. Thank you very much for your input. Thank you, Mr. Runch, again for uh, outlining the uh, uh, the process and everyone who is concerned and who would like to, again, attend any of these meetings, please check our website for them. Moving on. Um, Item E, recommend draft resolution authorizing execution of a labor contract with Mohawk Electric for OH wire replacement on Stevens Street, ComEd right-of-way, and James Street in the amount of $263,429.93. Uh, do I have a motion, please? So moved. Second. Motion by Mark, seconded by Alderman Singer. Do we have any questions for Mr. Wright? I guess seeing none, hearing none, although, oops. Uh, Alderman Cummings. Um, I, I just, I want to register, uh, it, uh, I'm not completely uncomfortable, but I am somewhat uncomfortable with the fact that we weren't 
able to get other bidders on this. It was uh, disappointing. It, it's interesting from an economic standpoint that people passed because they're just too busy. I, I like to hear that. Um, I won't vote against this uh, for lack of um, a second bid, a third bid, but it does, it gave me pause. Gave, gave me, me pause, pause too. Yeah. Thank you. But um, I, I did speak with, um, with Hell, and uh, he, uh, he did point out that, uh, I don't know if I should, if I'm stating it correctly, but you checked around and their work was? We checked around, we checked their references. They're not a contractor that we've used before. They're coming out of Missouri, which speaks to the fact that we weren't able to get any bids from our normal contractors. We sent out about 15 requests to, uh, the contractors that we've done business with in the past. And the fact that none of them were interested is somewhat disturbing. Mm -hmm. However, at 260 some thousand dollars, we're a couple hundred thousand dollars less than our estimate. So we're really happy with the, with the bid. And the references were very good. They finished their projects on time. They'd hire them again. Excellent safety record. So, at that point, I'm comfortable. Yeah. Thank you. Sure. Any other questions? Concerns? Any questions from the audience? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Let the record show it's unanimous. <clears throat> Thank you. I guess we're going to have an item, another item on the agenda. Recommend draft resolution <clears throat> authorizing the execution of a third amendment to agreement for the sale and purchase of electric capacity and energy uh, with Wastewater Illinois, uh, Waste Management Illinois Renewable Energy LLC at Settlers Hill. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Alderman Maladra, seconded by Alderman Brown. Any questions? Alderman Singer. Uh, thank you, Madam Chairman. Um, Hal, um, am I correct in surmising that I think City receives what about 10 percent of the generated right. power from the settlers' location. That's correct. We get about 10 percent of our requirements from from the landfill and generation. And the other is, uh, how much longer do you think we'll be able to receive that that energy from that source? That wasn't part of our negotiations for the the energy, but it's my understanding that the gas output from the facility has peaked or will peak very shortly and will start to, to taper off. There's estimates for how long that will be, but I think those may not be things we count on real hard. We'll have to see how this particular landfill reacts and you know, if it tapers off faster or slower. But I'd say there's another 20 years at a, at a rate that tapers off. Well, I I, I would imagine you're probably looking into the prospects of a, a source in which that will be available to us when that source is no longer available. Sure, sure. As we, every time we go out for power and, and try to meet our needs, we take a look at, at what our projections are, what our resources are, and, and that gives us the value that we go out and look for. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you, Madam Chairman. You're welcome. Uh, and I, I, uh, I hear that uh, the pricing is within market price, so or below market price. So that's correct. We try and shoot for about 10% below market. I think we're in the 13% below at this point. So we took a look at the last good. 12 months, and and uh, based on the last 12 months of market prices, we're this is by far the the best rate that the city has in our diversified portfolio. Thank good you. Good deal. Thank you. Any other questions? Any questions from the audience? Hearing none, seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Let the record show it's unanimous. Thank you, Mr. Wright. Recommend adoption of an IDOT supplemental resolution for improvement by municipality under the Illinois Highway 32. Control <clears throat> Code. Excuse me, in the amount of $539,478 for use within the 2008-2009 street program. Uh, this is more of a housekeeping issue, but 
passed. Anybody has any questions? I so move. Ah, great. Thank you. I so second. For not, uh, <laughs> for not observing that. I so 20 oh 20. Uh, yes. Any questions now? Okay, hearing up. Oh, any questions from the audience? Hearing none, seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Let the record show it's unanimous. Item H, recommend draft resolution executing a contract modification for the third deck parking expansion project with Walsh Construction in the amount of $5,197 for an overall contract to an amount not to exceed $4,611,017. Do I hear a motion? So moved. Second. Um, by Alderman Marks, seconded by Alderman Simonian. Any questions on this issue? Yes, Alderman Simonian. Uh, Rich, oh, thank you, by the way. Uh, What's the, what's the status of that? And I mean, just do we have an update? I, I know they were the cranes out there. I know they were going to work some Sundays, possibly. The status of the project overall? Yeah. I mean, are they on target? Do we know? They lost all last week due to the extreme weather conditions. Okay. And they had anticipated two solid work weeks to erect the final, the precast structures. Uh, they did remobilize this morning. And they'll be working through so they still actually had one more week of wiggle room left on uh including for the next two weeks or still the last week of july where the, uh, july january <laughs> where they Wishful can thinking. uh still finish things up as a matter of fact uh, myself and uh dustin schultze and uh, brian Sharper, the assistant director city engineer and v3 developed a list of what we feel they need to have uh, complete to make their february 1st deadline it's not that well defined within the contract but as of right now, with a little cooperation from Mother Nature and uh, this week and next week, they do seem to be conducive to uh, outside work. They, uh, they're going to have to get motivated. There's no mm -hmm. doubt about that. And they're going to uh, have to uh, move in an expeditious manner, but uh, they still can't get it done. Okay. Thank you. Ms. McKittrick? Um, I did uh, receive a, an email from uh, Matt Walsh, uh, the, the president of the construction company, this morning. Uh, assure, reassuring me that they would be um, that we would be parking cars on February 1st February 14th first first first, first. Ooh. so we're planning on holding them to that schedule so unless okay. something happens <laughs> unless we have frigid weather uh, for, on the below zero weather until that time I don't think so what was the sub-zero stuff that uh, rather chilled the iron workers to the bone yeah. It is very cold on that third deck. I haven't been I, up there, even when it's nice outside here. But I hear that concrete, or I mean, if I remember correctly, it's 20 degrees or something for a couple of days. Well, for concrete work, there. this is uh, yeah. iron workers up there right now. Oh. So uh, as long as there's uh, less than two inches of snow underground, and I think it's uh, 10 degrees, I, 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 I can get you the exact temperature what it is. But when they get into sub-zero temperatures, they start it's running cold. into a problem because your skin starts sticking to the steel and it's nasty it's sure. a lot of paperwork <laughs> <laughs> a lot of ouch ouch too <laughs> and um i just wanted to say kudos i i i know that you mentioned you started off with a higher price than the five thousand dollars and came down from there so that's correct so uh, we uh, we started at the initial cost of uh, just over ninety eight hundred dollars for two cameras which we thought was uh Quite excessive. So, very good. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions, comments? Yes, Alderman. Yes, uh, Rich, um, you may not be available when we get to a point of new business, but I just want to uh, congratulate you and your staff for the fine work you've done in removing the snow in our city this last couple of days. Well appreciated. Keep up the good work, and thank you. Thank you, sir. I'll make sure they hear that first thing in the morning. Thank you. Thank you. Nope. nope. Okay. Any other questions? Hearing none, seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Let the record show it's unanimous. Uh, we're going to be going to a closed session, but uh, before I do that, um, I'll open the floor up for new business. City Council. Do I have any new business? 
make sure that we I guess there is none so we'll um, be uh, going into closed session on collective negotiation negotiating matters between the public body and its employees or their representatives and uh, we will return to an open session uh, roll call. Yep. Chuck Brown? Aye. Mike Bruno? Aye. Donald Cummings? Aye. We do need a motion. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. So <laughs> yeah, I have a motion <laughs> to go to closed session. Alderman Bruno, I'll second my alderman remarks. Okay, now roll. <laughs> Chuck Brown? Aye again. Mike Bruno? Aye again. Donald Cummings? Aye. Dorothy Flanagan? Aye. Craig Maladra? Aye. Richard Marks? Aye. Tom Simonian? Aye. Ron Singer? Aye. Mary Sino? Aye. We will return. Okay, we're returning to open session. Uh, so I hear a motion. So moved. Second. Marks, Simonian. Okay. Chuck. All those in favor? Oh, I'm sorry, roll call. <laughs> Chuck Brown? Here. Mike Bruno? Aye. Here. Donald Cummings? Aye. Dorothy Here. Flanagan? Aye. Craig Maladra? Aye. Richard Marks? Aye. Tom Simonian? Aye. Ron Singer? Aye. Mary Sino? Aye. Okay, item number six is to open session, oh, to recommend approval of a letter of agreement concerning appointed members of the Geneva Fire Department, re-entry into the bargaining unit for previously exempt employees and advancement into their tested positions. So moved. Second. Marks makes the motion, uh, second by Alderman Cummings. Um, I don't think there will be any questions, but if there are, hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, let the record show that it is passed. Um, we did open, we did do new business already, so I need uh, adjournment because we're moving to a Motion special to city. Second. Afterwards. I'm sorry, coming. Motion to adjourn. Second. And Marks. All those in favor? Aye. aye. Um, should we move right into it, or do you want to take a two six? Okay, or do you want to? Oh no no! Oh, oh. Yes. okay. Um, this is a special meeting of the city council of the city of Geneva on today on January twelfth. Um, do I have a roll call? Chuck Brown here. Mike Bruno. Here. Donald Cummings? Here. Dorothy Flanagan? Here. Craig Maladra? Here. Richard Marks? Here. Tom Simonian? Here. Ron Singer? Aye. Mary Sino? Here. Here. Okay, everyone is present except for uh, Alderman Kilberg. Uh, the first item on the agenda, since we have no omnibus, is going to be approved resolution number 2015-01, uh, executing a contract modification for the third level of the Third Street commuter parking lot project with Walsh Construction in the amount of $5,197 for overall contract of $4,611.17, uh, $4,611.17, I mean, no, <laughs> whatever that is, I can't <laughs> read it now, $4,611,000. 11,000. No, $611,017. Thank you. Jeez. So moved. Second. <laughs> Gosh. The final one she read, I no, moved on. No, it was terrible. <laughs> I have a question. Uh, yes. Is that supposed to read overall co contract not to exceed? Um, yes. Yes. No, that's what we that's approved. Good, good. Yeah. Previous oh. Yes, the original. Um, yes. Motion on the cow was to not to exceed figure. I mean, the, the, the term not to exceed was put in there. So I can move to add that. Move to add yeah, that. And that's to modify fine. it. Yeah. Okay. Duly noted is Thank you. according to the secretary. Uh, do you have who uh, made the motion and who seconded? I do. Okay. All those in favor say aye. Agree. Aye. 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 Any opposed? Number uh, item number two. Motion to approve resolution number 2015-02, approving a letter of agreement concerning appointed members of the Geneva Fire Department, re-entry into the bargaining unit for previously exempt employees and advancement into their attested positions. Do I hear a motion? So moved. Second. Alderman Bruno, second by Simonian. Any questions on this? 
on seeing none all those in favor say aye. aye aye any opposed unanimous do I have okay. anybody need to be roll thank call? you Alderman Marks um, I um, ask that we waive the fees for tonight's uh, meeting special meeting of the City Council second okay a seconded by Alderman Bruno all those in favor say aye aye, aye. any opposed let the record check as you let the record show it's unanimous madam chairman yes um alderman bruno asked whether or not that last item should be a roll call vote i think it should be mm -hmm. so if, okay. if there's no the objection resolution. we just go back to the resolution matter okay. item two and just ask for the roll call to sure. memorialize that roll call vote okay let's do that My we'll take a roll call okay chuck brown aye mike bruno aye donald cummings aye dorothy flanagan aye Craig Maladra, Aye. Richard Mark, Aye. Tom Simonian, Aye. Ron Singer, Aye. Maricino. Aye. Should number one also be roll yes. call then? Should number <coughs> should <coughs> probably should be. We probably should. Okay. Uh, can we go back to item one and uh, <laughs> only if you say the amount a roll again. call? <laughs> well, you got to read the amount right. <laughs> oh, I can do that again. Six hundred, six hundred, six thousand eleven. No. <laughs> Turn the Never cameras mind. off. <laughs> Turn the cameras off. I cannot do that. Okay. You said you weren't going to do a joke. Oh, roll call. Chuck Brown. Hi. Mike Bruno. Aye. Donald Cummings. Aye. Dorothy Flanagan. Aye. Craig Maladra. Aye. Richard Marks. Aye. Tom Simonian. Aye. Ron Singer. Aye. Mary Sino. Aye. Okay. Look, may we adjourn, please? <laughs> Motion business. to adjourn. Thank you. Madam Chairman. Yes. Finally, <laughs> we've raised our voices at the end of this meeting. I've had a couple of complaints that, and I think tonight was a perfect example. It may be the weather, it may be the temperature, but there are a couple of complaints from people out there, our constituents, who say you can barely hear us on TV because we tend during the meeting to start talking softer and softer. And by the time you listen to it on TV, nobody can be heard. So I believe you should take the attitude of somebody speaking to an audience. You're speaking to the person in the last row. We tend to whisper to each other in the in this meeting room we're close together we're all friends but it really is very very hard I've tried myself to hear us speak on TV so this last little um, episode I think was fairly audible <laughs> fairly loud on TV yes. but most of the night people have been whispering and again let's hope the temperature warms up and we all speak with a slightly louder voice and my constituents will be happy thank you well noted I still need a second for the adjournment yeah. wait wait be just have a motion. Right. For, uh, for an adjournment. Yeah. Marks. Yeah. Marks oh. Yeah, but you still have so to. Second. second to adjourn, please. A second. second. No, you already did one, didn't you? <laughs> she's told me to yell. <laughs> oh, Marks did the motion. I'm, I'm, trying, I'm, trying, to, I'm trying to support my elder statesman. All those in favor statesman. say aye. <laughs> All those in favor aye. say aye. Thank you. This begins one downhill quickly. It did unravel.